Welcome everyone to this week's live and Rodin is here who's actually an artist. Hello everybody. And myself Chantal who's a holistic counsellor but also supporting women in business and this week we are going to be talking about, ta-da, <laughs> we are going to be talking about <clears throat> blank pages and what that feels like sometimes it feels really liberating and sometimes it can feel really daunting um but how we have to let go of the thoughts the perfectionism and just sometimes just play and let whatever needs to come out come out and flow Chantel <laughs> Yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> oh my God, how true is that? Because you know, the last two times, for those of you who have watched or can watch the replays and on my YouTube channel, Unfold Your Freedom, we did talk about the ugly stage and that's where I am with this one now. But how it came about was, because there's still some blank pages here and it's about being curious. Like you said, a blank page opens up curiosity. This fugly stage that you call it. So the ugly stage opens up curiosity. Yeah in art mm -hmm. but how can that translate then into our lives when we don't feel safe or don't know how or haven't been taught to just play and have fun be spontaneous oh. and I am actually <clears throat> this is kind of perfect for me tonight because I know so many artists I have so many artist friends who paint abstract and they make they they just create such beautiful works of art and I always want to do that but it is way outside of my comfort zone and and my wheelhouse I mean I don't really know how to do it and so I'm just afraid I'm just going to make a big fat ugly mess um but I'm going to do it anyway because you know, sometimes there's a lot, we learn so much when we can feel the fear and do it anyway. I think that's the best way for me to explain it or express it right now is yeah. to just do it and to have fun with it and to allow myself, if it ends up being a big, ugly mess, that's okay. I can paint over it or chuck it or whatever, but just to play with it. So yeah. Yeah, and that's like in that, that is hard for me too because this I tried to use a different medium. I've got these watercolor pencils that I bought a while ago, and I was very excited about them because you can you and then uh, you draw. So that's what I've done here. Yes, and then you use water to make them look like watercolors. And then I was trying to blend because they say this is marvelous, and then nothing's happened the way I wanted it to. <laughs> so now I'm trying to paint over, and it's not happening. So I think also. Something that I'm learning here as well is to be curious, to explore, and then knowing when to let go. It just didn't work, but yeah. you gave it a go. Yes. You tried. Yes. You know, and they say, say then, uh, feel the fear and do it anyway. That was Susan Jeffries, wasn't it, all those years ago. Did you ever read her book? I don't think so. Yeah, I read it years ago, and it was one of those things that um, you've got to feel the fear and step out of that but I know for me when I I needed to feel safe for a long time so of course fear was too difficult to feel so it was a lot mm. easier to be outside my body to be away there so doing anything different was too scary to do um, because my right. self-worth was so low that oh I can't do that so that of course translated into my business into posts I wrote, into how I responded to people, because all that comes out, fear of judgment. Yeah. Am I saying the right thing? And, and I was just thinking, yeah, you do that. I do that too, that fear of judgment. But then you, do you feel, do you find that you then get awkward? Oh, yes, of course, st <laughs> awkward, stilted. <laughs> Uh, you know, cracked yeah. up, oh, you know, all that sort of stuff. And then, you know, nothing comes out the way you want it or you feel uncomfortable. You, you do you post, don't you post, do you comment, don't you quote? And then you comment and then you delete, the, de delete again. All these things come to play because I realize now 
I couldn't be stay within myself to trust what I was saying, who I am, and mm. going against perhaps the grain, going against what others were saying. You yeah. know, cause, you know, because you don't believe in your own truth anymore. You don't believe in yourself. You know. Yeah. Have you found that with yourself? Because how do you teach? Because you teach students art. How do you help them get over this sort of, you know, or to remain in curiosity? That's a good question, Chantal. Oh, I feel put you on your spot. So perhaps you might need to think about that one. Because <laughs> I'm just curious, because how do you support young ones in you know, overcoming? Oh, it's so different when I'm teaching. Yeah. Okay. It's so different. It's because it's not me, but I can understand what they're feeling and what they're what they're going through. Yes, yes. And I just, I don't know. I I just after years of doing it, I find that way. It's always very gentle and encouraging, and you know, letting them know that they can do it and that I believe in them. And and I I'm a big advocate for playing right for playing for just exploring for it's like don't worry about it don't worry about it so I guess I really do just coach them through with with lots of love and positivity and fun and and they you know they most of the kids will do it they'll accept the challenge and they'll mm -hmm. you know and then I'll, I'll often sit with them and and walk them through things, maybe make a suggestion or tell them, oh, try this, play here. Do you see what you've done here? This is so pretty. Look at the colors. And I help them to see the things that they can't see yet, right? Yeah. I like that. And what I'm hearing is for me to reflect back is you're giving them a safe container to be in number one. You're giving them permission to explore. And the other thing I'm thinking is, and I'd like your thoughts to anyone who's listening, how you feel. Sometimes it's easier to support someone else than yourself. Very much so. So much easier. You know, like you said, you, it's easy to say to someone, just do it. Just, you know, you can do this. But then you've got to sit down and go, wow, can I really do this myself? You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's why I love what we're doing here because it's just opening up these conversations so people know you're not alone. It does happen. Yeah. So how do you remain curious? Because I love when I was going through my spiritual part of me, when I look back now, and I'll be talking about this in other platforms about spiritual bypassing. I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, that's right. When I did a lot of meditation and I loved uh, this one that came to me through my teacher years ago, be curious like a child. You know, because children are curious, aren't they? You know, look at babies when they get to know their bodies. There's such excitement. Yes. You know, about exploring and finding. Yet we lose that over time. We absolutely do. That's um. so so speaking of like that, the joy that they find when, you know, when they discover their bodies and are learning how to maneuver them and. Um, I had my grandsons today and <clears throat> the baby who's almost a year. Um, I had him, I took him upstairs to try and get him down for a nap, which was not going to happen. Um, <laughs> but he, so we're lying, like we're lying on the bed and he crawled away from me and he put his head down on the, on the pillow, but then he was, he was just all in motion. Right. And then he, the way he moved, he rolled and hit his head against the wall because the bed's right against the wall. So he hits his head um, and he's lying there and I'm waiting for a reaction, right? And I kind of crawled and looked over at him and he smiles at me and kind of giggles and then taps the wall and makes the sound. Oh. And I was like, now, this is so interesting. Yeah. And then he laughed. He looked at me and he laughed. And then he wanted to play. And I just thought, you know, following his lead with the play, too, because I yes. just touch his tummy and he, 
he'd giggle away, right? And then I'd touch his foot and he'd giggle away and pull his foot away. And then, of course, he'd put his foot back, right? So it, it was just fascinating. And I really did think about how how they do interact with the world and how there's that it is all new but to them it's safe and fun at that especially when they're that young and I was like I need more of that myself right yeah. Yeah. just more of that yeah fun curiosity expression and the other thing like is letting go of the your grandson needed to go to sleep, you know, because sometimes got to go to sleep. So we focus on that rather than just going, you know what? Let's just go be with what is. Because a child, you know, he was having fun. He felt safe with grand, you know. It, there's yeah. a whole different thing here, but we're taught from a young age we can't do that. Sleep, sleep, or be seen and not heard, or, you know, you can't do it that way. You've got to do it this way. So all these things get lost. And I think it's partly through, obviously, society, communities, how we've been brought up, but also when you've been brought up with childhood trauma, you, you don't, it's too scary to be um, open and playful. Yeah. You, know? you don't realise because you can feel the anger or the fear or whatever's happening there. So you shut that beautiful, innocent part of yourself off. Yeah. You know? That's so yeah. true. You know, and how do we come back to that? Hmm? I was just going to say exactly what you were saying. And so how do we find our way back to that, right? As a part of healing. Yeah. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, I think, you know, it's interesting. I think it weeks, you know, everyone has their own ways and you do different things over the years. So I think, again, it's like finding what lights you up. But again, I know for me, when I first started looking at what did I want, I didn't even know what I wanted. I didn't even know what let me up because I, I hadn't been taught to think like that. Like I can think for myself and I can do something I want and love and I can explore. So I think it takes time to allow yourself to. Now, having said that, I'm just wondering now, okay, before I triggered into PDST or complex, I did actually explore as adventurous. Oh. But I still, in some ways, but then I did, because I've been looking at this, exploring this over the last while as I write my memoir, what was about then that was different <clears> to <throat> me afterwards and what I'm coming back to. Now, I, and I think it's also, I was listening last night a program um, about menopause and a lot of the symptoms, we think of just hot flushes and this, that and the other, but there's also oh. anxiety comes, fear comes, um, lack of confidence comes all these things, that depression that we don't talk about. So when you've got that and PDST, it highlights it all. So you have to sort of like, I had to unpack it all, but the big, the one I'm going to keep, most probably keep talking about is feeling safe. Is what? Sorry. Feel, feeling safe. Yes. Once I felt safe, really safe, I could then really, it was like even doing this. My goodness, if, you know, a while ago, I could never have done this, sat here and just talked about art and showed my artwork and, you know, things like that. I could never have done that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But here I am. Loving yeah, I don't, <laughs> And I don't think I would have been sitting here just playing around with no particular direction happening. And uh that's another to thing to do that too right yes exactly right and that's the other thing no particular direction because again when you think about um well I go back to running a business but anything we have to set goals we have to have plans we have to strive we have to succeed achieve rather than yeah. also bringing in the other side of well how about just letting it go allowing it to flow you know um that's the other thing I had to un unlearn all that side that kept me safe, kept me doing, kept me away from myself to just go, mm -hmm. you know what? Like what you're doing now, look at you, you're just playing. I mean, how much fun is that? <laughs> it is, it is, I, I, I am, I, there's that little part of me that's judgy right now. It's like, yeah, what are you even doing? That doesn't look like anything. That's right. And it's supposed to be a flower. You had a <laughs> flower in your mind. And the paint is not making a flower and my hand's not making a flower. So I'm making a blob. <laughs> and that's okay. And that is okay. But, but that 
in the past, I don't know about you, but for me, that would have been triggering because I couldn't get my head from what I had in my mind out of paper. Therefore, I wasn't doing it right. So all those doubts and yeah. things come up rather than just going, how I'm playing. See, I do the opposite because you do. I love your um, art, your what was it? The lights, Northern Lights. See, to me, I started the opposite. I started doing things like what I'm doing now is because it didn't have to be perfect. Because even that, I can still not get what I have in my mind onto paper. So now I just go, you know what? I call it, because part French, expressionist naivete. So it's naivety. And I've been naivety okay. for the last three years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, because it's giving me permission just to sit here. I've got all my lovely stuff. I've got all these, lovely, I don't know if you get them in this way. These are my watercolors. And I've got about 24 colors here. You know, and I'm just having a lot of fun just going, okay. So coming back to what you say, what color should I use now? Right. How should I explore that? How should I, what should I put that color with this color? So that for me is my curiosity and opening up, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't have, I would have done this in private before. Yeah. And I think I would have gone to this stage. I wouldn't even have made it to the fugly stage. I just would have looked and gone, you don't know how to do this. That's it. And That's I would it. have put it away someplace, right? Yeah. yeah. And walked That's away. That's exactly right. And what then we don't realize as humans and as people and as, can you imagine the magic or the creativity or the uniqueness that the world is missing out on because we have these stories, beliefs. I know that hold us back from just being me. So anyone yep. who's watching, I'd love you to share on the replay. What is something unique about yourself? Because that's a question people have asked me over the years. I used to feel, oh, oh I don't know. Oh, that's being ego or, you know, showing off if I say what's unique about me. Right. It is. Yeah. It does feel very ego, doesn't it? It does. And Darlene has said hello. Oh, hi, Darlene. Oh, good. It's come up no. on yours, not hi, mine. Darlene. Hi, Darlene. Love to hear what you have to think about this. Yes. Because Darlene, oh my gosh, I love having her in my life because she's also teaching me all sorts of fabulous things as well. It's love having all these women around that are we are pushing our boundaries in ways, but being able to support each other with love and acceptance and play, yeah. you know, exploring. Oh my God. In fact, it's interesting. I'm loving what's coming up. I've actually done something here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. I don't know. Can you see the colors of that properly yeah. or is the light not right? Now that I'm enjoying what I've created there. That has become a little bit of a, a yellow blob. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I better leave. Oh, actually, I better leave it and see, you know, let it go. But again, this is what it is about having fun, being curious, yeah. exploring, just sitting down. And it doesn't have to be art. This is the other thing that I learned. It could be anything. Knitting, crocheting, cooking, baking, yeah. dancing, the way you wear your clothes. Because that's all about self-expression. That is all feeling comfortable with yourself. Yeah. And enjoying. Yeah. And enjoying that space to change things. It always seems to kind of come back to that being uncomfortable, taking the chance and changing, right? Being yes. willing to make a change of some kind, whatever that is. Like maybe it is um, adding in a color you wouldn't typically wear or have or use in your wardrobe, right? But you, yes. but you kind of want to do it, right? Yes. So you do and... Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> but, but that's exactly. But you've done it. You've tried it. You know. You've you've yeah. done it. Because I know years ago, when I was a teenager or late teens, I was because so, we lived in uh, England in a two story house. And I was coming down the stairs. I was so excited about what I was wearing, and Mum made a comment: "You can't wear that," or something like that. Oh. And of course, it went boom. And she only said years later she remembered that. And she actually apologized and said, "I'm so sorry, darling, because of your way of expressing yourself." Now, as it happens with my clothing, that never stopped me. Thank goodness. <laughs> Might have done things in other things. <laughs> but I think it's about also perhaps starting somewhere where you can be kind and gentle with yourself. 
Yeah. You know, wear somewhere that you love. Like for me, it was loving wearing clothes, but now I really learned to wear different colors that I wouldn't normally wear together or different patterns. You know, right. so I've, that's something because I love wearing clothes. I've always been good at wearing clothes, but I also used it as a facade. So that's another story. But now I'm a lot more able to wear bright colors, um, patterns that perhaps you wouldn't put together. Because I look at it now. This is, I did get from my mother and my father. I were interesting. I can look at it and I know immediately will it work or not because it just hits me here. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And I trust that. So, that, I mean, how long has that taken you? Because that ties into that feeling safe enough, right? To try something new, to, to paint, to start the blank page. How long did that take you? Look, a period of a few years because I came and went, came and went with it. Um, and also depends how I'm feeling. So for a while there, I wore yeah. very bland colors because I didn't want to stand out. Yes. You know, I was too busy struggling and surviving. But really to be fully, fully expressing myself in that way is, um, is just only recent, really, in the last few years. And I love it. I love it. You know? Yeah. And I love the exploring. So that is what we're talking about. I think, Rodin, isn't it? To, is to where can you then take that into other areas of your life? So I can bring it into my art. I'm bringing it into my writing. You know, I'm creating my, developing my style there. Right. Yeah. I'm losing hesitancy and um, to, or should I write it that way? Is it grammatically correct? Should I be doing that? Because that way, what you do is you stifle yourself. You know, you hold yourself back. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you become your own worst critic, don't you? Yes, because then you have to edit everything. That's exactly right. <laughs> and not only edit editing, everything. Exactly you right. Edit then, that's right. And then what you're doing is you're trying to preempt not getting judged. You're trying to preempt what others are going to think. So you can imagine this whole energy is going in this out there that you're thinking so busy externally rather than just going, you know what, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. You know, get curious. Be like that child. Oh, and it feels like we're going around, but it's just lovely. I love doing these chats because things just keep coming up and popping in. You know? Oh. Yeah. Well, it, it's also nice. I just enjoy the flow of it. Like just the... We can... Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I can. Oh, Darlene's just written. So I've done just like you going. The blue blob down the bottom looks like a wave breaking. Yeah, yours like it. Oh. Yes. Oh, in here. Yeah. I presume. And this yeah. is what I also love. Thank you, Darlene, because it's Thank you. sometimes it's nice to hear what other people see <clears throat> to what you don't see, yeah. you know. Um, and it's being able to accept other people's perceptions and comments I mean I know again it depends how it's said but again it's hearing other people's opinions without making it personal or without personalizing it and making it yeah. about yourself and also being able to separate yourself that's their opinion versus yours um, mm -hmm. or it might be actually oh perhaps it rings an element of truth but you don't want to hear it you know yeah. So you might get defensive or reject or push back. That, that's, you know, that could be a whole another topic for another day, too, if you think about, because um, one of the things I've, and I greatly appreciate the lessons, but um, the, like, almost like, what do they call them, mirror neurons, or how people mirror so, uh -huh. so if I react to someone, I know now that there's something in there. There's a lesson in there for me. It's about me, yes. right? And how and working through that. Sorry, I just thought I'd throw that in. But there's mm. another another topic because you had just said, of course, mm. right? When you react, mm. it's like, oh, mm. if I react, it's usually because there's some little nugget in there that's, you know. Look, and I agree with you. And something um, the psychologist taught me recently, because I'm going to see as a supervisor, talking about things and 
she was asked her how was I afterwards and how, how far I've come and that. But something she talked about, when your self-esteem is this low, all you need is someone to say something to you. And she called me, I, I used to be defensive. And of course, I had a reaction, didn't I? Ha <laughs> ha. I'm not, and I went, oh, I'm not, eh, you know, exactly. <laughs> then the next time I saw her, I went back to her and she said, you're defending yourself because what's happening is because your self-esteem is so low, all you need is someone to say something minor, it's squashed. Yeah. And you can't make that, as she calls the word I thought was dis discrimination, you can't discriminate. There's mine, so what? It's their opinion. Mm. Yeah. And you lose sight of that. And I know for yeah. me, I was so good at, and she said, I was so good at blaming like my father, but also taking the blame. So, of course, it has to be me. So, yes, there is that nugget of looking at it, but the nugget might be actually, no, no, it's not me. It's actually them, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it, but, but you are also right. I mean, it takes that isn't something that happens at the beginning of a healing process or when you are in a, um, when you are feeling particularly raw, right? That's, that's also not the time to be doing that. And it has taken me, I mean, again, it's taken me years. This has been years of working on this, right? Yes. Yes. Through my healing. But back, back in the beginning there, it, yeah. I, that was not the time <laughs> for me to, to do that. It wasn't the time. Exactly so, right. Exactly right. And this comes back to, and again, another yeah. topic, toxic positivity and bypassing and all those things. Cause that's exactly what mm. she said. Um, she said, I had to sit here and that's what she's learned. I mean, she's been doing this for 40 years and working with Vietnam vets and PTSD a lot, but she said, I also had to know how to hold you to know when you were ready yes. to hear that gentle challenge. Otherwise, I would have run out that door and never come back, potentially. It's true, yes. So it's a fine line when you are, as a therapist, to also know when can you and when can't you. When, you know, because sometimes it's just important that you speak out, speak it out. You know, and that's when yeah. she said afterwards, which was really amazing, she said, look at where you are now. You know, I could never have, I couldn't have done this a while ages ago, you know. So it was good, it was a good observation to see, you know, because it's mm -hmm. good. Sometimes you need to get that reflection back at how far you've come, you know, and it's exciting. Yeah. And this ties back to as we sort of come to the end, ties back to being able to be curious. Yes. To be able to be open to trying something new and getting that feedback from someone you know yeah and also someone you trust I mean the thing is that's why I used to find it quite hard initially I mean still do like with social media now there can something people can say some, some dreadful terrible things for what you know so of course there's a element of that so even though people say it's their issue not yours but you can't help but have it go in your heart you know yeah even the logic says yes you know that but your heart still goes oh <laughs> you know Aww. that hurt you know Yes. Um, and yeah. because sometimes people feel they can just sit behind the lap on the laptop and just go, you know, without thought. It's true. That that's actually incredibly common. It is like incredibly common. Yep. If yeah, if it's not something you would say to someone's face, why on earth would you say it online? But oh, look, I agree with you. I agree with you. And I just think it says, so when we're talking about logically here, then you know it says more about them than you, you know, deep yeah. down. And they're hurting. So if you can, if I can step away and and be able to step into my heart space and have compassion, doesn't mean I like it or want it around. But if I can have my compassion go, oh, oh, what's happening for you? You know, are you having a bad yeah. day or something has happened? So it's how can you hold that space for both? Now, again, is that spiritual bypassing? Is that bypassing? So all these things come into play, which we'll be talking about over, over <laughs> the next conversations, however many yes. that'll be. So, yeah. So is there anything, any wise words you have as we end this session this week? Oh, goodness. Wise words. Probably not so wise, but uh, <laughs> just, 
just, I hope everybody has a fabulous week doing whatever you get up to. And, you know, try, maybe try one little thing differently one day, just mm -hmm. one little thing differently one day and see if that doesn't just take you on a little bit of a different adventure because, you know, even taking a different route or a different turn on your morning walk, right, can can just open stuff up and enjoy the the unexpectedness that you might find. Oh, and I love that. And I'm going to push the boundary for others too. Do something and come back if you'd like to be held accountable and either comment here on the mm -hmm. Facebook Live or on our YouTube when I put it up, when you hear it. Because sometimes it's just nice to write it. It's like, I did this. Get the excitement. So we can all share in that beautiful energy because, oh, mm -hmm. she did this, he did that, someone else did it. And it might give you the courage to also keep taking that next step and feeling it into your body. So really feel, how does it make you feel? Because that's what you're going to be building on is that excitement, that yeah. joy. That's what builds confidence, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Keep being curious, everyone. Keep being curious. Yes. Thank you for listening. And mm -hmm. next week we'll be back to Monday, Sunday night in Canada, uh, my time, yep. uh, Monday morning. And yeah, Let's see what we come up with next. Now, anyone, if you have any topics you'd like us to talk about as well, just pop them in there. You know, absolutely. Share, be part of the and conversation. Come join us. And if yes, you've been working, if if you've been working along with us, show us, show us what you've been working on too. Like drop a drop a picture of what you're working on in the yeah. comments as well. We'd love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank Until you. Until next Bye. week. Bye.